with the Oppo X8 getting really close to the release itself, let's discuss the previous generation, well technically the current generation, the Oppo X7 Ultra and let's discuss how the camera performance on it is because this is one of those phones that I got a lot of requests for, so I'm very curious how this one performs. So let's dive into the video and showcase what this camera is actually capable of. And also, behind me is a hint where we're going. Let's see if it focuses on it because I have it. Okay, just one second. There you go. So let's showcase what this Oppo X7 Ultra is capable of. So, intro out of the way, what I've used here is of course the movie mode when it comes to the video that you saw. It's 4K 30 frames per second, which means I cannot really slow it down to add that little bit more of stability feel. And of course stability was on while recording that. In terms of sensor, I was using the main sensor here with small subjects, so every movement really stands out. But I still think it did really well, even more so with the depth of field in some shots and the transition to it. Now for those wanting to know the location that I'm taking these shots at, it's Intratuin in Duiven, which is of course in the Netherlands. Now I really wanted to go here for a while. Of course there's a Christmas theme going on here, but also some Harry Potter vibes as well. Though I've heard there's a better one that has more of that Harry Potter style going on. Maybe we'll go there some other day. Now in the times that I've used the Oppo Find X7 Ultra so far, I really have enjoyed it. The camera is really capable of capturing some amazing shots. But of course we are here now at the Intratuin and let's discuss how it captures those vibes. And I think this is the kind of style where the Oppo Find X7 Ultra is at its best. Of course I have been to more locations and while I think it performed well with these vibe, I think it's just its strength. It manages to capture the depth really nicely, it's not too bright nor too dark, it captures plenty of details and no crazy over sharpening going on, really capturing the soul of this Christmas market that I was at. I also asked them how long it took to make this, to set this whole thing up, and it took about 6 to 7 weeks to make. Including of course the small and big details. Now portrait photography, that's something that we also have to discuss when it comes to the Oppo Find X7 Ultra. And lucky enough I have that friend that helped me out here. As you might have seen in this comparison where I showcase different phones and how they perform in portrait photography. If you haven't seen that yet, link in the description where you can check that out or the annotation on top. So when it comes to portrait photography on the Oppo Find X7 Ultra, I think it's one of the better ones that I've tested so far. It doesn't go for a too smooth look, nor too bright, while also retaining plenty of detail. If there are some things to note or things that I want to see a bit better, it's the edges. The edges on the portrait photography can be a little bit harsh, giving a, a, kind of a cutout vibe. But in turn, it does have excellent edge detection where shots like this are quite hard because of the hair strands, but it still managed to do very well for a phone. And of course, don't forget to play around with styles as well when it comes to portrait photography. I really like the warm style that you get, especially during these autumn months. 
now applies it low in Apodorn. This is one of these two tests for me. And again, I'm genuinely impressed with what the Oppo does here and what it's able to capture. And I think the best way to describe it is balanced. I don't think it's best at capturing the summer vibes, nor I think it's the best in capturing the soul of the place itself. Doors are really ruled by the Vivo and Xiaomi, but in turn, where for instance the Vivo lacks a bit of that soul inside, the Oppo does manage to capture a little bit more of that. Though I will say, when it comes to the ultra wide in these situations, inside it can create some very soft edges. This is probably to do with noise reduction going on around there, so it loses some details around those edges. But I still think it's a fairly good result. But because of it, I don't think it's the best ultra wide I've used. Though of course, it easily beats the iPhone 16 Pro disaster. Though, that isn't very hard now is it? So when it comes to the Oppo Find X7 Ultra and the shots that I've taken so far, it has been a very balanced experience. It manages to capture different situations really well. And while it isn't the style that I would normally go for and something that has my preference, because that really, really matters when it comes to mobile photography, heck, photography itself, inside the Intratown, it genuinely impressed me by how well it managed to capture the feel there, how it manages to capture the focus, and the details, of course, are amazing as well. Outside, I think it does really well too. Sure, again, it misses out on some of that contrast that I like to have in my shots. It can take a little bit of that filter look in some shots, but nothing too crazy where it would frustrate me. I think the best way to describe this phone is that it does make me want to capture things, to play around with the options and of course explore. If a phone does that for me, I think that the phone is really good. Where sometimes where a phone technically is amazing, it fails to give me that feeling where I really want to capture things around me. But the Oppo Find X7 Ultra doesn't do that. Now of course, I will get questions about low light photography and videography. Even though this isn't what I do most of the time, let's discuss. But before that, let's have a look at this, showcasing of course, the video capabilities. So low light performance, I often take my shots in Arnhem, a city in the Netherlands, because there are a decent amount of warm tones and all the buildings there in between, which has a lot of character, and I can take amazing shots here of it. But how does the Oppo Find X7 Ultra perform here? Well, I would say the Ultra Wide, for instance, can have really soft edges around the shot itself, like really soft. This means a lot of loss of detail in shots like these. And of course, it doesn't look pleasing in those situations, where the center does look solid, with a good feel of night as well, as you can see in this church shot. But in these kind of situations, where you really push the camera itself when it comes to the ultra wide, it can definitely struggle. Now with this shot of the bridge of Arnhem, sure, some of it is hidden, but the approach is much better in comparison on this ultra wide shot. 
with good details on the bricks but also the bridge itself. It also captures that scene really well without going for a too bright approach. And here in this hotel shot as well, again, see how it doesn't have as much softening going on around the edges. Sure, it has a little bit, but nothing near what you got on that church shot. So when it comes to the ultra wide, if you have a decent amount of light coming in, the shots will look fine, though lacking a bit of that night contrasty feel that I like. But when you push it like the church shot, where there's very little natural light or little source lights around it, it will struggle to capture those edges while the center will look proper. For the main sensor, I think the shots are really detailed. Plenty of sharpening, nice control of the highlights and good dynamic range, with sometimes light sources having that star effect on it that I actually really like. Sure, lens flare will be a bit of a thing here and there, but in general there are little complaints about the experience that I have with the main sensor and low light apart from my own preference, which is something that you can never really count for. And that's the general take that I have in low light. Sure, I think the zoom and the ultra wide don't compete with the main sensor, but that's natural. But they do capture the scenes well, and when comparing all the shots together, they are giving a very similar result in color. So proper color calibration between all those sensors in low light, which is of course really important. So at the end, when it comes to the X7 Ultra, this is still a fabulous camera. In terms of what you get out of performance from a camera system like this, is really really solid. I like that you also have two periscopes in here, giving you a wide range of different focal lengths, which is something that I enjoy because of course you want to play around with it, going from ultra wide to the 6x zoom, and of course you can go past that, but I hardly ever do and hardly ever go past 10 times because I don't find the need in it, but mostly of course it does come at a software of quality. Either way, when it comes to my impressions of the X7 Ultra, sure it's not necessarily what I like to see in the camera itself when it comes to the, the contrast and the depth in it, but I still think that the processing on the Oppo X7 Ultra is really really solid, especially at the Intratown and Dyfen, I really was surprised about the quality that I get out of it. With portraits I will say it again, it has a little bit more saturation that I would personally like. But I do think it's really solid and I think this is one of those phones that I can easily recommend when you want a good camera performance on a phone. Because of course, the rule is, the best camera is the one that you always have with you. And this, this probably is one of those that I can easily recommend when it comes to the camera. But do keep in mind, this was never a global release. Either way, I do hope that you enjoyed the video on the Oppo X7 Ultra and the camera performance itself. Either way, I really want to thank my channel members as well. I really do appreciate the help there. And of course, anyone watching and subscribing and liking, thank you very much. Either way, don't forget to check out some other videos that I've made on camera performance for different phones. And of course, if you aren't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe. And I uh, hope you like the new background. Have a good one and talk to you guys in the next. Thank you.